What's going on everyone? In this video, we'll be talking about some key SAT December hacks that you all can use to improve your SAT score tremendously, like a lot. So first things first, SAT December guys, it is the last SAT of the 2022 slash 2023 SAT cycle. And this is your last chance if you're taking SAT this year to really improve your score. Now, if you are a junior, of course you have like so many SATs in 2023 that you can take to improve your score. And in fact, the fact that you're taking the December SAT which is such an early SAT in your junior year of high school is pretty astounding. So good job, good job. But you're a nerd. You should be like playing outside or something, not studying for the SAT. But if you are taking the SAT this December, I want you all to get the best SAT score possible. So let's talk about some nice hacks. We're gonna start off with the math calculator and non-calculator section. So right away, one of the best hacks I can give you guys is whenever you're given, you know, on the cal math calculator section, you're told to find a solution between two equations. What you wanna do is yes, you could do it by hand, but usually the point of that question being on the calculator section is so you can use a calculator to find your answer. What many people don't realize is that you're given linear equations. So if you were to plug in the first linear equation into y1 equals, the second linear equation into y2 equals, and you find the intersect, right there you are able to get the solution. Right, the, the TI-84 slash TI-83, which are the calculators you guys should be using for the SAT, will easily get you the answer if you use Y1 and Y2. And you don't understand how many times I have used this, the Y1 and Y2, to find you know the answer to these types of questions. Or even if you're given a quadratic and it's like, hey, find the zeros, right? Find the x-intercepts. All you have to do is put the quadratic equation into Y1 and then put Y2 equals zero. So there's like a horizontal line at the, at the x-axis and just find the intersect. Again, Easy peasy lemon squeezy. All you have to do is that you don't have to do any, you know, calculations where you're multiplying numbers together, adding, subtracting, dividing, all this complicated stuff when you can just literally use a calculator to your advantage, right? The point of the SD calculator section is to use a calculator to your advantage only when you need it. A lot of times for math, and this is the second hack, so you're gonna find out that you actually don't need to use a calculator on the calculator section. A lot of the problems you can do mentally. In fact, I think only 10 problems actually require a calculator on the SAT calculator section, maybe even eight. So if you're using your calculator for like almost every other question on the calculator section, you're doing something wrong, buddy. So I really want you to start focusing on that mental math. Now, the third hack for math is be sure to utilize your window, guys. Your window is an option that you have on the math on the calculator for your math calculator section, where you can like, you know, edit how much you see of, the, of your graph. And a lot of times people don't realize that you can do this and they try to like find like a solution or find whatever they're trying to find. In this, in this negative 10 to 10, negative 10 to 10 window, when you can literally make your life easier by making it like negative 1,000 to 1,000, um, like negative 100 to 100, and finding and examining the graph that way. Like a lot of people do not utilize the window enough. And I feel like when you are taking AP Calc, you're probably gonna realize how effective this is. So if you're already an AP Calc student, you're most likely, this is probably easy for you. You're probably gonna be like, hey, like I, I can do this already. Like. I know this, but a lot of students who aren't taking AP Calc the junior year of high school, you might be not as accustomed to this, so this might be some new information to you. And the last hack for math is to know your I table. Guys, the I table is I equals square root of negative one, I square equals negative one, I cubed equals negative square root of negative one, the I quad equals one. All right, know this table and really it's just memory, right? If you rehearse it for like five minutes straight, I guarantee you, you remember the I table for the rest of your life. All right, know this because on every single SAT math section, you will find at least at least one I question, most likely two or three. So, you know, if you want to get those easy points, because trust me guys, these questions are one of the easiest questions if you know your I's table, then you gotta snag them, all right? Don't let them be, don't leave them off. Make sure you actually study those, the I table so you can answer all those types of questions like, quick too. Like, you don't wanna spend more than like 10 seconds on this, these I questions, all right? Most likely you're gonna have to multiply two I's together, um, sub in negative one for I squared. I squared is the most common thing you'll see. So just know I squared equals negative one and know the other three as well. I quad, you probably won't need, but hey, just remember that I quad is equal to I squared times I squared. So negative one times negative one equals one, which is why this whole I table works. Real quick, if you want to know other ST math hacks, be sure to check out my ST math course in the description below. Now moving on to SAT reading. All right, so SAT reading guys, the harder section of the SAT, everyone knows. So now are some amazing hacks you guys can use to make this hard section super easy. Well, the first hack is to understand the semicolon versus the colon. All right, these are not the same. You can literally look at them like this one has a little, you know, thingy coming out of this one, just two dots. A semicolon joins two independent clauses. All right, while a colon has an independent clause coming before it and what comes after it is a dependent clause. 
that adds emphasis on the independent clause. All right, so if you ever see independent clause, uh, some punctuation in the dependent clause, think about a colon. If you see independent, independent, think about a semicolon. It's very simple, you know, distinction between the two, but a lot of people do not understand it. And as a result, they get easy, easy SAT writing questions wrong. And guys, the SAT writing section is the session that will literally carry your SAT score for the reading section. Because unless you're some reading comprehension whiz, you're probably gonna be struggling on the SAT reading section. So let's maximize our writing score. And the best way to do that is know your punctuation. And that brings us to the second SAT reading slash writing hack. Let's know the M dash. The M dash, you know, it has, it's a dash right here and a dash right here. The stuff in between, right? It's like extra information that it gives you more clarity on the sentence, right? But it's not needed, right? It can be omitted. You can take it out, okay? Now just know that usually when you see a dash in the middle of the sentence, you should expect that second dash. So those questions that, you know, have a dash and then have a comma at the end, they ask you, what's the proper way to, you know, punctuate the sentence, make sure you know that, hey, if you have one dash, you need a second dash. It's like parentheses. If you have an open parentheses, you need a closing parentheses. Now, there is a special case where if the dash appears at the end of the sentence, it acts like a colon where, you know, like you can have this that last part of the sentence and a period, all right? That works with the M dash too, but with the dash, but it's not that common. Uh, in fact, in SAT, I probably only see that like once or twice. Most likely it's gonna be where there's a dash, like, you know, a dash in the beginning and a dash at the end, uh, and then it, stuff in between that you can take it out, you can keep it in, it just adds more information to whatever the topic of the sentence is. Now, these are some straight dimes that I gave you guys, some math hacks, reading hacks, and I want you guys to utilize them. And the best way to utilize them is yes, watch this video over again, but two, actually take an SD practice test in the next two or three days and make sure you remember these hacks and actually try to do them, right? Study them. And if you guys like even one of this hack, comment down below which hack was your favorite. So that way people reading these comments will constantly remember, oh shoot, oh shoot, now I know. And if you want good luck on the SC December, then be sure to comment down good luck in the comment section and you will, the world will give you good luck and you will get a 1600 SC December. So let's claim that good luck in the comment section. Thank you all for watching. If you guys enjoyed this video, be sure to like, subscribe, and let's crush the SAT, check out my SD math course. Thank you for watching, peace.